Hello everyone, my name is Alessandro and this is the Temple of Surf, the podcast will give you full access to the best surfers, skaters, shapers, surfboard collectors, shop owners in the world. Discover with me their stories, the greatest successes, amazing behind the scenes and much more. Hello everyone and welcome to the 9th episode of the Temple of Surf, the podcast. Today with us, Joel de Rosnay, a famous doctor in science and scientific writer, but also famous for pioneering surfing in France in 1957 and creator of the Surf Club de France back in 1964. He just released a new book called Petite Eloge du Surf. Let's discover more about him and surfing in France. Hello, Mr. De Rosnay. Welcome to the show. Where are you today? I'm in Paris, confined like everybody because of the of the virus. So we have to stay home most of the time. Yes, we need to have patience, but uh, it's a different uh, it's a different way of being together, yeah. right? But I can see on the webcam my friends surfing in Guetari right now. Oh, yes. Ah, nice. <laughs> they have a good time. At least over there they can go out uh, and. Uh, I, wonderful I, I, weather, a good wave, one, one and a half meter waves offshore. Beautiful. Today we're going to talk, uh, of course, about your upcoming book, Surf and Surfing. Uh, but the first question that I have for you is, what is the most important thing, in your opinion, in surfing? Freedom. Yes, yes right. It's like... Uh, it's it's a- freedom to choose the wave, freedom to decide what you want to do on the wave, But that freedom is changing now because of so many people surfing. So yeah. you have to select the right spot, the right time, and uh, go very early in the morning. But it's, the freedom has changed a little bit in the last 10 years. But for me, surfing is freedom. Yeah. But I guess if you are like in a, in a place like uh, La Côte de Basque with the different uh, places to surf and uh, different waves and different beach, maybe uh, you can still do it. Uh, Without, uh, without having a lot of people with you all the time, right? I don't surf at Côte Basque anymore. There are too many surfboard uh, lessons. Ah, really? Ah, yes, true, true. 200 people, it's impossible. No, not, not worth it anymore. When did you start to surf? It was uh, 1950-something, right? 1957. I was just 20, 57. I started surfing before that when I was 15, but on my tummy with a bodyboard okay. and planking, bodyboard and a small planking. But I started surfing, standing up on the, on the board in 57. Wow. 1957. And basically at that time, uh, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was totally different, right? It was surfboard were barely available, right? How did you... It was difficult, difficult to have a surfboard. I had two boards coming from the United States in, in balsa wood, a transparent fiberglass, and brought by Peter Viertel. And uh, they were not making board in France. Barlan had not his factory yet. So that where we had to import board that was quite expensive. And those boards were quite heavy compared to the board of today. Well, that's just a big change now because there's so many boards made in France. And, and secondhand boards, I have 12 personally. Ah, good. <laughs> It's good to uh, keep short, short, medium, long. <laughs> My longest board is 10 foot 2. My shortest board is seven fifth seven two. Okay. So to, from seven two to ten four, one fin, two fin, and quattro. Okay, that's that's nice. You know, it's uh, always like uh, uh, it's good to have like uh, surfboards at home if your wife allows that, right? Because otherwise uh, there is divorce. Uh, you know, every time I come back home with a new surfboard, my wife tells me, Alessandro, I'm gonna divorce you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that our mistress is a surfboard. Exactly. We spend a lot of time with it, so they're not worried. My wife is she is very very good surf widow. Exactly. You know, if the if the, the surfboard is the problem, are the problem, then there is no problem at all, right? Imagine if you would come back home every night with a different girl, then the most yeah, no problem. <laughs> Do you remember your first surfboard? Like uh, The, the first one that, uh, not that the, um, was imported by U.S., but the first, one that, the first one that you bought. Yes, I remember very well. You can see a picture. If you go on the internet, www.derosnet.com, surfing, and you'll see a picture of the board, the first board. 
What was a balsa, a balsa painted board with stripes, green and, and yellow, and with the name of my girlfriend at the bottom. Ah, romantic. <laughs> it was a secret for a long time. It's not a secret anymore. And uh, you still have that board or your uh, what happened? I still sit in, in the surf museum. Ah, I still in the surf museum. It's amazing. It's amazing that uh, you, you can still have because I ask many people if they still have their first surfboard and everybody kind of sold it or traded it or gave it to somebody else. And I guess for surfers... It's still, in the, it's still there and you can see a picture of this first surfboard surfing for the first time at the Grand Plage de Biarritz. If you go on Joël de René surfing on the internet, INA, INA, is the archive of the French national film. I gave it to the French national archive of filming. I'll definitely have a look at it. Um, you created in back in 1964 the Surf Club de France. And uh, yes. 56 years after, that is a lot of time, 56 years after, how surfing in France has evolved, in your opinion? Well, surfing in France in 1964 was still a, a few people, maybe more, not more than 30 or 40 people at that time. But we organized a lot of contests and we invited people from England, Cornwall, people from, uh, from uh, the islands, uh, Channel Islands, or surfing with us. And then in 64, already the surfer from all over the world came for surfing, but particularly in the 70s, because I wrote an article in Surfer Magazine that you can find on my website. And this first article from Surfer Magazine, which was in 1971, attracted a lot of surfers in France. Okay, yeah. It's been, back then is where they started to, to be attracted by Europe, right? They were going out of yeah. USA and Australia. And of those years, like the 60s, uh, what is your uh, favorite memory or your best memory of those years? In the 60s, one of my favorite memories was a famous surfboard, which is a famous spot which has disappeared now, called La Barre. Okay. L A space B A R R E in Bayonne, Anglet. It was a place close to a pier, a fantastic left, the current to go out and serve back, but well, it disappeared because they created another pier and that spot is gone. But that was a fantastic souvenir. You can go on my website and see pictures of this famous left. I will. I will definitely. It's a, it's a pity that disappeared now, you know. Finish. Finish. <laughs> um, you had an amazing uh, career professionally, and uh, you did like uh, wrote books. You you work for the Institut Pasteur. Uh, you have a, a huge uh, and a, an amazing, extraordinary career. Do you think that being a surfer uh, helped you in some way in uh, in your professional life? Very much. I tell you why. Because there is a word which is difficult to translate in English. In French, it's la glisse. Glisse, G-I-L-I-S-S-E, glisse. Glisse is a concept of going with the element, finding your way. And I think this concept can apply to life. In business, with difficulties, you glisse, you slide away, you slide like in surfing, yeah. on, a big, on a wave, which is an erratic thing that you cannot, forecast, you're on it, it's like life. And the, thing, the term glisse is in my new book, which is coming the 18th of June. Yes, exactly. Let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, it's the yeah. book is called Le Petit Eloge du Surf. Uh, voilà, et de la glisse, et de la glisse. Et de la glisse. <laughs> um, what the readers should expect from, from this book? What you prepare for them? Well, I try to explain the passion of surfing, why is it a sort of addiction? Why the waves are always different, conditions are always different, nothing is the same. The weather changes, the wind changes, the surfers come or they're not there. So it's like life, it's unpredictable, gives a lot of pleasure, short time pleasure, but you have, it's very intense. So that's what I like about surfing. It's reproductible, it's erratic, and it gives a lot of pleasure for a short time. So I try to explain that in this new book. And I try to explain how you can apply that 
to life and management and business in complex situation. There's a word that I tell you in French, it's called le déséquilibre contrôlé. Mm-hmm. Dis- balance, disequilibrium balance. You, you, you know you are in disequilibrium, but you try to correct that balance all the time. Same thing in business. So it's very actual also for today because uh, today with coronavirus uh, pandemic, everything changed, right? And so... Yeah, we- well, you said nothing we can do about the virus, but it's something you can do to adapt to the erratic conditions in order to benefit from it. Rather, the confinement in which we are today, I try to make it positive for me, for my family, in reading more books, in talking to each other with FaceTime, in concentrating our nutrition and management of the body. I have five or six different instruments in my home, a bicycle, nice. a rowing machine. And so we use this all the time. So confinement and the virus has created conditions in which we can concentrate on ourselves. Unfortunately, we cannot surf, but there is a gadget you can buy, which is a surfboard. <laughs> and it's called in virtual reality. Yeah. You put special goggles and you are on the surfboard and you see the waves, you're in the tube. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's nice. And maybe yeah, if, if you have like a... I, I, I have it put in the museum, the uh, Musée de l'Océan in Biarritz. Yeah. The Cité, the Cité de l'Océan, I, I introduced that virtual reality application. I, I really like it. It's very nice. <laughs> Actually, it's, uh, with technology nowadays, it's, uh, it's real. It looks real. Even, even, even the spray water in your face <laughs> makes a noise. And the spray water... Not a lot, I hope. <laughs> Not with a bucket of water they just <laughs> throw. <laughs> cool. Um, but yes, so... Uh, Let's talk about that because we, we talk a lot about surfing. I give a lot of interview about surfing. But we don't talk enough about under the wave. Not only on the wave, but the economy of breathing on the wipeout, the apnea to stay under the wave. So... I'd like to talk to you sometime about the risk and the dangers and the physical preparation to avoid drowning. But if you want, uh, we can talk right now. If you, if you. Yeah. I think on the wave is one thing, under the wave is another thing. Of and course. we spend some time, more time under the wave than on the wave. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> and and what, what people should do in order to prepare themselves to, to face don't people. panic it's, it's medi- I do a lot of meditation every day and it helps me very much when I'm under the water I sort of relax I know I'm going to go out or somebody will see me and the problem is that waves are 14 seconds apart in France in the Atlantic Ocean so if you're under a wave it holds you for 14 seconds so you, you get the second waves coming so you have to be trained very well trained so I train a lot during the winter in swimming pools to keep my breeze, breathing and to avoid dangers. At 83 years old, you have to be careful. Of course, of course. And as you said, uh, you spend more time under the water, so we need to be fit. But I yes. guess the mental fitness is... a uh, is Mental and physical. Uh, in- All the machines I have here help me. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But, um, but yes, I think, uh, you know, even uh, um, with meditation, you know, like... Uh, it's, it's a good for surfing, it's good outside surfing. Uh, actually, with uh, more meditation, I mean, maybe we're going to have a better world, you know, because people, they will be able to see through uh, their life, their objectives. And yes, absolutely. And in the water, it's a, it's a sort of a spiritual experience because the ecosystem is a complete system that gives you this pleasure. And I want to thank it all the time. So I... I clean the water the most that I can. I want to thank the ocean for what it gives me. It yeah. gives me. It's very important. It's very important. But thank you for sharing this, uh, this story. Looking back uh, at your career or looking back at your um, surfing uh, experience, surfing career, is there something that you would, uh, you would have changed or you would change looking back? My career, no. No, I would be, I'm very happy to have been able to have a scientific career, a writer, a speaker, professor, at the same time practice all the sports I really like so much, skiing and surfing. So I won't, I won't change. I would do the same, same thing. That's great. It's no, no regrets. And uh, actually, is uh, whatever happens, it happens. It's just life, isn't it? So. Yes. Yeah. Lou, Alessandro, what board do you have? What kind of board? I uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I'm ready to divorce uh, because I have so many balls. The length, the length, it's like, t t I like those 10 foot, 10.4 foot, you know. Um, today, like these days, I'm riding a Bing a Levitator, Square Tail, Glasson, Finon, but I really like as well uh, Skip Fry. I have a 10 foot fish. This kind of board, but very, very long, you know, like uh, kind of. You like one fin or three fin? I know I like one fin. Actually, but the, um, depends on the board, right? But uh, you walk on the nose? No, I I think <laughs> because I am 100 kilo. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have to pay attention, otherwise I just do like uh, <laughs> I off balance. But uh, you know, I'm not like a competitive surfer per se. But I'm um, I'm a, you I, enjoy it. I like to have fun in the ocean, you know, and that's the, the most important thing, you know. Just paddle out, spend some time, share some uh, smile and experience with people. Even uh, La Côte de Basque, that, uh, um, that is quite crowded, uh, still, you know, it's, uh, it's fun, you know, you just drop and the sharing, sharing with friends is very nice because if you take a good wave when you paddle back, they go like that, good yeah. waves, <laughs> they congratulate you, that's very nice in the crowd. Exactly, exactly. So we said about uh, about the book that will be released on the 18th of June. And then what's next? Because uh, I, I think like you cannot stay still, right? You need to do a lot of things all the time. So generally I write I write things much more serious than book of on course. Of generally. Course. And generally, and I'm thinking about the next one on complexity and emergence of new properties from complex systems. It's very philosophical, very scientific, but I'm very, very interested by this. How new property can emerge from a complex system where every element doesn't have the property of the global new property? How do they manage by interaction to create something completely new? I'm interested in that. Wow. The next book is on this subject. That will be the next subject. You know, yeah. you wrote so many books. How many do you, you wrote? Like uh... 16 books. Wow. 16. You have more books than a surfboard, huh? You need to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have all 16 books. <laughs> cool. Um, thanks a lot. We're going to finish our interview with a short Q&A session, question and answer. If you answer the first thing that comes up to your mind. Okay. Uh, the best surfboard that you ever ridden. I, I, have, I have a great chance that I have a friend Called uh, was an Australian living very close to me in Biarritz. She's bought for me. He knows me very well. He's a great surfer himself. And as he knows my body so well and how I paddle, all his boards are always very, very well fitted. My best surfboard now is a board made by him. So 9.6 nine, six, nine, six with four fins, but I really like very much. It's pointed nose and pointed tail. and Quite quite light, but at the same at the same time very strong. So I like this board very much. Okay. His, his name is Phil Grace. Phil Grace, G R A C. -E. Everybody knows him. Of course, of course. Who's the best shaper of all time? Phil. Well, for me, it's Phil Grace. That's it's him. Okay, good. You know, is is a you can be a best shaper for. Like for all the world, but at the end, at the end, if you if you if you Google his name, you will see he's very well known around the world. I think at the end is like if you find somebody that is doing the surfboards for you, based on your specification and and requirement, then he can be a best shaper even if the world doesn't know about it. Right? It's a it's a combination of the surfer and the surfboard. Right? Yes. Your favorite song. Carly Simon, you so vain. Oh, wow. Uh, I like her very much. Okay. It rem reminds me of the 70s in Boston. Carly Simon is a great singer for me. And the Bee Gees, I love the Bee Gees too. And the, and the Dire Straits. Bee Gees, Dire Straits, Carly Simon. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, your favorite surf spot? I think really it's Guetari. We call it Parlementia. Yes. Because it's a break, it's a rocking break. It breaks always at the same time, opens la right or left, and I'm very used to it's my garden. Yeah, I saw I saw Parlamentia 
Uh, it's a beautiful spot. It's wonderful, wonderful. But I also like in Hawaii, Aleiva. I like that place very much. And in Mauritius, Tamara, Tamarin, Tamarin Bay. Okay, nice, nice. All, all amazing spots. The last two questions. Uh, best surfer of all time, in your opinion? I like Joey Cabell. I think one of the best surfers who invented a lot of things was Midget Farley, Midget Farley, David Nueva. But Joey Cabell, for me, remains an example of style with Mike Doyle and, and particularly Phil Edwards. Phil Edwards and Joey Cabell, they're old now, but they, were, they introduced so many things in surfing. Phil Edwards created this famous drop knee turn cutback. Yeah, beautiful. It was invented by Phil Edwards that Nation copied. And, and Joey Cabell, you can't imagine a better style and the most beautiful surfer than him. So I think they, they're models for me. Okay. And the last question is a little bit unusual, but we ask to everybody. We want to know your best relationship advice. Be open. Always open with people. Listen to what they say. Respect their difference. Respect their difference. Don't try to judge them. Benefit from a, char a different character and benefit from talking to people and exchanging in a very nice way. Don't be competitive. Yeah, I think if um, communication, right? If if we had more communication in the world, maybe we would have had less problems, right? That's what we should tell our children. We should. We must. We must. Open. Open. You don't know competitive. We must. But thanks a lot, uh, Mr. De Rosne, for today's interview. Uh, we look forward to talk to you very soon. I look forward to talk to you very soon and can't wait for the release of uh, Le Petit Eloge du So. Thank you for your questions. I wish you a great evening. Bonsoir. Au revoir. Good, sir. Bye. Thank you for Hi, it's me again. I hope you enjoyed our today's episode. If you want to know more about us, please follow www.thetempleofsurf.com and all our social media. Mahalo!